panel on the health care law that was held at a, a local hospital in my district. And, uh, you know, I was one of the people that was speaking on that panel, uh, and there were a number of people in the, in the health care industry, people that, that have insurance, and it just seemed to be an, an underlying theme that, that continued to go through uh, that room that, that nobody is ready for this law, nobody knows how it's going to work for them, and, and most people are really concerned that the good health care they have, they're in jeopardy of losing. Uh, and again, this is something I hear all the time when I'm back in my district talking to small businesses, uh, talking to families who, who have health care, that they're now having real concerns about whether or not they're going to be able to keep that. I mean, do you, are you out of touch with this, or do you hear these real concerns? And, and I talk to my colleagues from other states, and they're hearing the same things. I mean, are you hearing these things? I mean, I think it's important to keep in mind that for the many millions of Americans who have health care through their employer who empl that employs more than 50 people, they're largely unaffected by the Affordable Care Act. Well, I'll give you an example. I've met recently with the owner of Whole Foods. They have something like 30,000 employees. Uh, this is a very large company, a very well-respected company nationally. Uh, they have health care that their employees really like. Their, their employees actually get to vote on the benefits. Uh, it's a very highly successful plan. They, they manage to control costs. Uh, they beat the industry average, and, and yet they still provide a plan that their employees like. And under the current law, from what they see, their plan is not even eligible. Their 30-plus thousand employees that have good health care they like are right now at risk of losing that coverage. You know, the old promise, if you like what you have, you can keep it. It was broken to those 30,000. That was one example. I mean, do you even aware of that? Well, I can't speak to specifically to we that You ought to example. find out about it. What a real-life example of a real company that's a well-respected company that has good health care their employees really like, and they're right now at risk of losing it because of this law. But, but, but I, I want to walk through you some specific some specific things that we've been seeing, uh, you know, and start with the pre-existing coalition, uh, the condition insurance program. Uh, y'all did, uh, y'all did actually stop, uh, stop taking new new enrollees in that program, right? Because it, it ran out of money. Uh, we stopped taking new enrollees to make sure we wouldn't run out of money. All right. So the the early retiree reinsurance program that was supposed to last until 2014. I think it was it was discontinued in 2011. Is that right? Well, I think the success of that program showed the great need for it. And so enrollment's closed on it? It was so uh, successful that somebody can't get in it right now? We are paying out claims now only uh, based on money that's coming back to us. So can someone enroll in it today? Oh, enroll in it today? No. No, so they can't enroll in it. Uh, some requirements of the Small Business Health Options Program were delayed. Is that correct? The shop will be operating in October. The one provision that is but did you delay? But did you delay some of those? Uh, provisions? One aspect of the shop, which okay, is the employee so choice we have. That's been delayed. The CLASS program, that was that was supposed to be Obamacare's long-term care program. That was actually repealed by Congress, wasn't it? Uh, that's not one of mine, so. No, it's not <laughs> one of anybody's anymore because it got repealed by Congress. It was so bad. Uh, and fortunately, hopefully none of this is yours anymore because we could repeal the whole thing. But but want to hit one more of them, the 1099 requirement that we were hearing horror stories about. Uh, that was getting ready to take effect. Again, part of Obamacare. Uh, the horror stories were so bad that, that Congress, Republican and Democrat alike, agreed to repeal that too, right? That's my understanding, though. Again, that's the truth. And it's not, yours, it's not your problem anymore either because we repealed that. Uh, so there's five examples right there, five examples, some, some fairly small components. Uh, but then you're here telling us that probably the largest component that you're going to have to deal with, and, and, and that's these exchanges, uh, they're, they're, they're going to be ready. You think they're going to be fine in a couple of months when it's time for them to come online? Yet I just gave you five examples of programs that were either delayed, uh, closed enrollment because they, they weren't ready for prime time, or just outright repeal because they were so bad. But then you're going to tell us that the biggest part is going to be okay? We're on track, and I can just point to the successes that we've had so far in developing uh, just the system. I just highlighted five examples of failures. In fact, I don't know if you know this, one of the lead architects of Obamacare, Senator Baucus, just last week said, quote, I just see a huge train wreck coming down. He's, he's not even running for re-election, but, I mean, he, he just said that last week. I mean, do you dispute what he said last week about the health care law being a huge train wreck coming down? We are on track and on schedule. On, on track. It's, we, the problem we, is there's a train are, coming at you on that track. We, 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 according, we, to, according to one of the architects, that's not me. I voted against it. Somebody that actually was helping push this thing through, 
said it's about to be a huge train wreck. We will be ready to help millions of Americans enroll in, in quality, affordable and I hope coverage. you're ready to help the millions of Americans that are about to be dealing with this train wreck that's coming. Uh, because, again, when you talk to real people out there in the real world, big and small, they don't know how they're going to be able to keep the health care they like for their employees. And that's a big concern of mine. Yield back. Gentleman's time has expired. Now I recognize Mr. Tonka for five minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Cohen, thank you for appearing before the subcommittee today. And the Affordable Care Act's Prevention and Public Health Fund have been subject to ongoing attacks since uh, their inception, in 